22, beginning at verse 1. And we'll continue through verse 14. There we find these words, and Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. Again he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cow, cattle are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servant, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. God bless the hearing and reading of his word this morning. Amen. And all the people of God said amen. 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 Thanks God. be Praise unto God, God who gives us the victory. Yes. Amen. Amen. Um, I want to share with you this morning's message uh, the danger of neglect. Uh, that's the message for today. The danger of neglect. Now, so far, between chapter 21 and chapter 22, um, we've reached the third in a trilogy of parables that Jesus would share uh, about a master and his subordinates. Uh, this time, today's message deals with the king and his citizens. Uh, but as you will quickly recall, that Jesus shared previously uh, the parable of the two sons one who quickly would assent to doing the will of the father and the other would quickly turn down his father but there was a change of mind one made the right choice in changing his mind while the other would change his mind to his dismay and despair then he went on to share the parable of the vine dresser. Yes. Um, though 
those who would uh, disregard the invitation to share in the land uh, as a least lessor to the, or should I say a lessee to the lessor. The lessor we know is God himself. We give an opportunity to those who would to share in his blessings that he has created and uh, given. Which now brings us to this third parable in this uh, trilogy of parables regarding this matter. And it's here in this uh, third one uh, that we would see God in the person of the king um, dealing with those who would uh, disregard and who would um, dismiss him if you would. Someone once asked Emily Post this question what is the correct procedure when one is invited to the White House and has a previous engagement? Emily Post answered with this. She said, an invitation to lunch or dine at the White House is a command and automatically cancels any other engagement. My brothers and sisters, the Christian should have a daily engagement with priority claim over everything to meet the Lord in the secret place. My brothers and sisters, as we read this 22nd chapter of Matthew, go over uh, verses 1 through 14, we see there uh, just as is described in this conversation with Emily, an invitation uh, to come to the feasts set forth for the son of a certain king. We'll make plain the identity, the parallel that Jesus sets forth in this parable in just a moment. Uh, but you have here a certain king. Now, this certain king, uh, in deciding that he would celebrate the marriage feast of his son, um, would invite individuals to come and celebrate with him. And in, in hearing and sharing in what it is that uh, the king is doing, it takes uh, mentioning and it's noteworthy that we would uh, pause long enough to come to grips with what is at stake here, what's at play here. It's a feast for the son of the king. Yeah. Amen. I mean, just as was described in that question with Emily uh, about how is it you turn down an invite to the White House, um, there, ought be, there ought to be that kind of significance and greater when you are invited to come to sup with the king yes. and share in fellowship uh, with the son of the king at a great fest festive ceremony as this. Yes. This is no ordinary invitation. Um, and so my brothers and sisters, too often we find that individuals uh, are invited into the presence of royalty and they look at it uh, and they say, uh, uh, yeah, well, let me check my 
schedule and see if I can work something out, if I can perhaps uh, squeeze you in. Now, let's take the parallel of this parable and realize that the king is God. Yes. And the son of the king is Jesus Christ himself. Uh, is it any more significant now that we understand that God is inviting us into fellowship with himself? As God would invite us to come into fellowship with himself, How significant would you or I take the invitation? Would we treat the invitation in similar fashion as we discover here in this parable? Well, let's go a little deeper. Let's look at the invited guests. We see who it is who's giving the invitation, but let us go a little bit deeper down this road and look at the invited guests, the invited guests who are, are, are invited to come uh, to share in this great festivity were sent out invitations in advance. And the third verse of this 22nd chapter says at the end of that verse, they were not willing to come. I mean, the king is inviting them to come and to celebrate with the son of the king. And the text says that they were not willing to come. That's the first uh, invitation that he shares with them. That's the initial invite. Uh, think of it as the RSVP uh, that you would receive in the mail when... Um, there is a great gathering going on and, and you will receive that uh, in the mail and you are supposed to respond by uh, the designated date, the okay. expiration date uh, of that invitation. You are supposed to, to give them a, a yay or nay and let them know whether or not you are coming. That date expires and it goes by um, and verse 4 says there is a second opportunity. There's another extension that is given to those invited guests. Um, the king would send out his servants and he would say, tell those who are invited. See, I have prepared my dinner my oxen and fatted calf are killed, and all things are ready, come to the wedding. He's already sent out the initial uh, invitation. He's already uh, let them know and made them aware uh, of the event. Uh, they disregarded the first invitation. He sweetens the pot in this second invitation because he tells them that uh, he has prepared dinner and he's gotten uh, uh, the animals all dressed and, and, and cooked up and ready. Uh, he's not only gotten them ready, but he's gotten the fatted cattle. Uh, those cattle that have been fed grain, they have been fed well, uh, got them nice and, and fat, uh, ready uh, to be slaughtered and, and cooked up uh, for this event. I mean, he, 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 he's telling them, you know, as if uh, I, I would uh, send out an invitation and tell you that on Memorial Day. Uh, I'm going to put together a barbecue. Can all I right, get away right. with you? Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, and then, having sent out the message to let you know about the barbecue on Memorial Day. I then, in turn, sent out uh, some text messages with some pictures, uh, yes, uh, 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 of uh, some 
some <coughs> smoked meats and some some sausages and sent out some pictures of of uh, uh, pool pork and sent out pictures of of some baby bats. Uh, right. Yes, dripping with sauce coming down <laughs> off of it. And, and just text them out to everybody so you can see uh, what's on the menu. And, uh, and I'd, I'd cap it off and say, come to the barbecue. That, that, that's, 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 that's similar to what took place here. And uh, even in the midst of him doing all of this and calling them to the feast, the invited guests, let's see if we can make this clear, would be the house of Israel, the obvious choice. Jesus came to the house of Israel to share with them the good news, the offspring of Abraham, the descendants of David, and here in Matthew, remember, Matthew is orientated to uh, show Jesus Christ as the king, and, uh, and, and so here he would invite Israel to come to the wedding feast, the obvious choice. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, life is not based on the obvious. Those who we would think would be the first in line to come and to get what God's got to offer is not always the obvious choice. My Lord. And, that, and that is still true even to this day. The ones who should be most appreciative of the gift of God the ones who all come running quickly uh, when God would extend the invitation. Uh, Jesus said on another occasion, I would have gathered you as a mother hen would gather her chicks. I, I, I would have received you unto myself. But you would not. The obvious choice rejected uh, him at first invite uh, and then my brothers and sisters not only would they reject him at first invite but look at verse 5. Uh, at second glance they would then make light of his invite and go their own way. I mean, they just simply, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, all right. Uh, let me see what I got on my schedule. Look, one went to his own farm. Another, he decided that his business was more important than pausing to be in the presence of the king. And then there was another crowd that was worse than the first two, uh, and, and this crowd would, would seize the servants of the king and treat them spitefully. And then others they would even kill. My brothers and sisters, there are folk who are trampling over the invitation that God has set forth in this world even today. God with outstretched arms is in inviting individuals to come and be a part of the family of faith. God is inviting individuals to come and to receive him as Lord and Savior of their lives. God with outstretched arms, uh, is inviting the world in which we, we live uh, to come and to be adopted into the family of God. And yet, there are individuals who are making light of it. You know, well, when I get time, uh, maybe I'll come and check it out. When I get time, maybe I'll, I'll see what uh, the church is all about, what God's got to offer me. 
when I get done with my career and get established, uh, then I'll spend some time with the Lord. You know, you didn't heard it all. Uh, the excuses, the uh, uh, complaints about the church. Uh, there's too many hypocrites. Well, come on down. We can use one more. Can I get a witness? Yes, yes. Um, uh, there, there are so many excuses that individuals would give to coming to the wedding feast. This is this is not. Jesus is presenting this invitation not as hard labor on the chain gang. Uh, I mean, he he presents it as an invitation to come and to dine and dwell uh, in the presence of royalty and to hang out uh, with the who's who crowd. And that's the invitation that they turned down. But, but it wasn't just the fact that they had turned down the invitation of the king to come and be with him that would infuriate the king. It, it's, it's the indignant uh, attitude and response that they would give also in relationship to the invitation. That as Jesus would come to them with outstretched arms to invite them to the wedding feast, they would in turn seize his servants and kill them. look out at individuals who uh, would feed the poor, visit those who are incarcerated, uh, would share with those who are in the hospital and comfort them, uh, would go to the bereaved who lost relatives and, and share and comfort them, cook them a meal and, and be there by their side. And then there are those who would look on at all of those good deeds and then have the audacity to criticize the church and to try to put down the church and call the church a group of hate mongers and all of that kind of thing. You think about that. Put them in the place of this text right here. Uh, they, they are, in fact, identical scenarios. Mm. And God, in turn, will treat them in similar fashion as he does with this group who would turn against the king and, and, and come down on his servants at the invitation to come and feast with him. I know we're not accustomed to hearing fire and brimstone type messages and this really isn't a fire and brimstone message. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, at the same time, let me tell you that the same God who is loving enough to invite you to the wedding feast is the same God who is just enough, yes, uh, to put those in hell who would refuse to receive the gift of eternal life. That's just the way it is. Don't hate me for saying what God has put in the text. All right. All right. I'm just the messenger. Uh, all right. Uh, it's right there in verse 7. But when the king heard about it, he was furious. And he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Why? Not because he's just mean like that, but because he invited them to come and be blessed, and in return, they would become murderers. And despisers of all things good. I mean, I'm reminded of Second Chronicles chapter 30, verse 10. There it says this: So the runners passed from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh, as far as Zebulon, but they laughed at them and mock them. How many of us on our jobs well. would share the blessings of the gospel, would share eternal truth and righteousness with individuals and let them know that there is room at the cross for you. 
only to find ourselves being mocked and laughed at, called a holy roller and other things of that nature. Yes, uh, while we are trying best we can to help them deal with their wayward son or daughter, yes. trying to help yes. them deal uh, with that child who is uh, locked up in juvenile hall, trying to help them uh, to get over, yes, crises after crises and difficult day after difficult night. Yes. I mean, just trying to be there for them, to be a shoulder to lean on, and yet we would find uh, in return that uh, the individuals who we are inviting are the same individuals uh, who are talking about us behind our back. Well, well, well. God says, well, guess what? Uh, while I've extended my hand to Israel, as I extended my hand, uh, yes, uh, to those closest around me, friends and family, loved ones, uh, and the like. Yes, and they turned me down. God says, I got something better. I'll extend an open invitation. You might reject uh, the goodness of the Lord, but I'm going to extend an open invitation. Look at verse 8. Uh, he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready. All things have been prepared. Uh, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. And they did just that. They went out into the highways and hedges. You're talking about just strange folk. Individuals, uh, yes, who are not in the, in the right class or in the right neighborhood. Just anybody. The gangbangers. Can I get a witness? Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, he, he invited any and everybody. Uh, the hustlers. Uh, yes. He invited any and everybody. Uh, yes. Those who are walking around. Uh, yes. Don't look like uh, they ought to be at the in, in, uh, feast of a king. In, inviting folk. Uh, yes. Who don't use perfect grammar. Yes, uh, to come and sit with the king. Uh, yes, uh, and, and those folk, yes, would come running to be in the presence and company of the king while turned down by the obvious choice, but while turned down, uh, yes, by uh, the elite, uh, yes, and the illustrious, uh, yes, there is somebody who has sense enough to hear the clarion call of Christ on their life and to come running saying, Lord, here I am. Yeah. Receive me of yourself. And even today, my brothers and sisters, sometimes we've got to do like Jesus would share with those disciples who he sent out two by two. When we reach a place where individuals don't want to hear nothing we've got to say and don't want to receive the good news of the gospel, we've got to shake the dust off of our feet because that dust is not worthy to travel up the road with us. Can I get a witness? Yes, amen. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, as we look at the text, Jesus is willing to allow the Gentiles, Jesus is willing to allow the Samaritan, Jesus is willing to allow those individuals who heretofore were not able to come into the presence of of the king who were locked out and shut out and so it is even in our generation individuals uh, who may have grown up in foster care individuals uh, yes who may have found themselves uh, in the custody of the courts uh, yes are now able to be adopted into the family of the king but it, you don't have to be a graduate of Yale. You don't have to be a graduate of Harvard. You don't have to be, uh, yes, a graduate of Stanford. You don't have to have grown up in the house of the wealthiest uh, of the wealthiest and the house of the 1%, yes, uh, in order to be a king's kid. Uh, yes, my brothers and sisters, God is saying to you right now, right where you are, no matter what mistakes you made in life, no matter where you have been where road you traveled down. God has sent servants out to the highways and the byways to receive you. Will you come to Jesus just as you are? As the old song.
song would say, weary, wounded, and sad? Yes, you can find in him a resting place and he will make you glad. Hmm. Jesus invited the whosoever will crowd to come to the wedding feast. Jesus then does a final inspection. Look at verse 11. He then comes and does a final inspection. In that 11th verse, the king came in to see. And that word see there uh, denotes careful seeing, looking intently or inspecting. While Jesus was there, while the king was there uh, to see the guests, he discovered that there was somebody there who wasn't supposed to be there. One of those individuals who had taken lightly the invitation to come and to be with him. Uh, and they decided unpreparedly that they would just come in. Even though they had not placed on a wedding garment. Look at what he says. He saw a man there. Who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here? without a wedding garment. And there are folk who have all the time in the world to respond to the gospel message. Mm -hmm. They've heard Grandmama talk about Jesus. They've heard Daddy or Mama talk about Jesus. They've heard Aunt or Uncle talk about Jesus. They've all had all the time in the world to prepare themselves to receive what God has to offer to get the best out of life yes. that God has for them. And yet and still they have played around, they have wasted their yesterdays as well as their tomorrow and they will find themselves at the great white throne judgment unprepared. Mm. And when God would ask them, why you come here without a wedding garment? Why, why is it that your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Mm. And they'll be just like this man. The Bible says he was speechless. I mean, this word literally means he was muzzled or gagged. He just couldn't say a thing. Mm. He was speechless in the presence of the king. How many would find themselves speechless before the Lord at Judgment Day because they have turned down the invitation not one time, not two times, not even three times. They have continuously rejected the invitation of God in their lives and they find themselves uh, on that great getting up morning, yes, uh, not able to get up. Mm. Speechless. Once she reports a parable by a rabbi of a king. And this parable goes like this. He set no time for his feast and the guests arrived, some properly dressed, waiting at the door, others in their working clothes who did not wait, but went off to work. And when the summons suddenly came, they had no time to dress properly and were made to stand and watch while the others partook of the feast. Mm. And that's just how it'll be in the day of the coming of the Lord. The danger of neglect. 
they got the report, they got the warning of the feast. Some would get dressed and wait for the start of the feast while others continue in their work clothes doing what they would do. But when the summons would come, when that great trumpet would sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet him in the air. They won't be ready for God to receive them unto himself. Look at this. It, it seems harsh coming from a loving Christ. But it's the blunt reality of our alternative to receiving what God has to offer us. Then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot. Take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And you just look at the contrast of the brightness of the illuminated wedding feast that is on the inside. Yes, yes and how bright the chandeliers are, how bright the scene and the setting is at such a gathering. And then this individual is cast into the outer darkness on the outside without the bright lights, without the candles, without any of that. They're cast into the utter darkness. And that, my brothers and sisters, describe, yes, life without Christ. Mm. That describes how it is for us to live out our lives in all eternity without him. See, there is eternal uh, life or there is eternal death. Uh, it, it's not as if we reject God, reject Christ, that we would find ourselves just simply uh, having a good time in the other uh, domain, in the other dwelling place. No. There, there, there's no dominoes in hell. <laughs> Uh, that, that, that's no partying in hell. Yes, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, the alternative to uh, heaven, the alternative to eternal life in the presence of God is eternal darkness, eternal death. Jesus says this to cap off this message that he would share uh, with you and I, the danger of neglect. He says, for many are called, but few are chosen. And as I go to my seat, that's what I want to leave you with. When God would share the good news of the gospel, he extends that call to whosoever, anyone can receive it, Anyone could say yes to it. But the reality is that everyone won't say yes. Many are called, but few are chosen. So the question today is, will you be one of the ones who are chosen? Will you, as the wine would say, be one of the ones who did? Yes. Will we receive what God has to offer us? That's the question that I want to leave you with. You don't have to be like these individuals who are cast into outer darkness. You don't have to be bound up hand and foot. You can be in the chosen crown. You can be a son or a daughter of God. So I invite you to say yes to him on this day. Lord, we thank you now in Jesus' name for sending your son to planet earth to be clothed in flesh and blood, to live amongst us, 
give of his life, dying in our place, but to rise with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. And just as he lives, we can also live. We can also rise again. We can rise above it if we would but choose to receive him. And so Lord, we pray that you would cause men and women, boys and girls to say yes. That they would give up their will and say yes to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.